Every season of Survivor is a story, but sometimes that story can be told over the course of multiple seasons. Some players will have two part stories, while others can play four or even five times and have a much longer tale. Why do some players rise and fall and never recover while others can fall and still get back up and succeed? Well today we're going to see the rise and fall of Russell Swan, who first played on season 19 Survivor Samoa. By the way, if you want to pick what videos I make and pick who I cover for story videos, then consider supporting this channel on Patreon. It is an optional way to support this content and grants you access to see everything up to six months early. Link in the description. Thank you for your support. 39 days, 20 people, one survivor. Russell Swan, a 42-year-old attorney from Pennsylvania, was a castaway on season 19, Survivor Samoa. And yeah, this is Survivor's first visit to Samoa and what a beautiful location it is. The season starts off with some Pirates of the Caribbean music, that's a bit strange, and we see 20 all new players split onto the yellow Foa Foa tribe and the purple Galoo. Russell Swan is on Galoo and right away Jeff says hi, time to pick a leader for your tribe. Well then, considering how often Jeff mentions the importance of a leader at tribal councils, it is about time the show made it into a game mechanic. Foa Foa picks Mick for their tribe's leader, but for Galoo? Yeah, better looking Lennox Lewis. All right, Russell is the leader of Galoo. I'm scared. This leadership thing can go south real quick. The highest nail definitely gets pounded down in this game. And right now, I'm like sky high. Who's the one that you always want to get when you don't know who you want to get? Get the leader. Well, 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 this should be fun. But Russell is right to be worried. If he didn't want the spotlight on him, that game plan is now out the window. He has to be at his best 24 seven because all eyes are on him. Jeff then says, pick a person to run each leg of this reward challenge. Russell picks John to swim, Eric to carry logs, Yasmin to untie puzzle pieces on a balance beam, and for some reason Shambo to do said puzzle. All of that made sense until Shambo, who says, whoa, I'm not even book smart. As it turns out, he made good picks across the board, including Shambo. Well, except for John. John blows it at swimming, and the lead he gives to Foa Foa is too much for Galoo to overcome. However, while everyone is shown making negative comments about their team blowing it, Russell is the sole positive voice about how proud he is of them, especially Eric for struggling through with all the logs. After losing, Jeff says, you guys are definitely the underdogs. And upon arriving at their camp, Russell says, here's what needs to be done, and here's who's doing what tasks. Go. And in surprising fashion, everyone says, yes, sir, and just gets to work. I say surprising because in past seasons, that's not how this goes at all. Usually, leaders are immediately ignored or trash talked, but not here. Everyone seems to love Russell already, except Shambo, who says he needs to be harder on all of them. But uh, we're going to ignore Shambo. You'll quickly see why. But then, in a secret scene, we see how Eric wants to align with Russell. I will kill for you. You're my leader. So my role is to be your protector. I think Russell's a fantastic leader, and I love the fact that I'm notched right next to him. I don't have to make any decision, I get to do all the dirty work, and I wouldn't have it any other way. I'm here to work for you, that's my job. Right, right. If I have one opportunity to protect you, and I did my job. He's the main guy, he's the big boss, I'm the guy behind the guy that you need to watch out for. Because if you come to Russell, you're gonna mess with me first. Considering that as a secret scene cut from the show, that typically means this is unimportant in the long run, but I find it actually connects to a later scene in the actual show, and I will let you know when that happens. We then go to the immunity challenge, where Jeff says, how's it going, and... Best group of people I could ever meet. Everybody's pulling their weight. Everybody, tough as nails. Jeff, I've never read that book. <laughs> Things losers say. <laughs> that was really good. That was good. Can we start this, Jeff? Because I'm ready to open some cans of whoop ass. Good. I'm glad Galoo won after hearing that smack talk. With it, they get immunity and flint, and back at camp, Shambo immediately takes the reins and says, Oh, yeah. I can make this fire. Spoiler alert, she has no idea and Danger Dave has to do it instead. So that is it for the premiere. And so far, Russell seems to be a solid leader for Galoo, who is a positive force in the midst of smack talkers and negative Nancys. Everyone seemingly likes him so far, but I wonder if that would change if they lost immunities instead of winning them. 
Episode two sees a real lack of focus on Galoo as Foa Foa is eating up a lot of screen time. And historically that means their tribe is a mess and Galoo must be doing just fine. As we don't even see Galoo until it's time for the immunity slash reward challenge of Schmergen Brawl. Basically this game boils down to getting the ball to your shooters by tackling the other tribe and stealing the ball from them. It's pretty brutal I gotta say. Especially since no one gets to wear any pads. But for the first time since season five Thailand, uh, not a good season to be compared to, a player is ejected from a challenge when Ben kicks Russell Swan in the back of his leg. What a cheap shot. Thankfully, Galoo does win immunity and reward anyways, but Barassi of the Foa Foa tribe has to be medically evacuated. And no, Foa Foa doesn't get out of tribal council because of this. They still have to go. So Galoo all of a sudden has a 10 to 7 advantage. Back at camp, Shamba loses the mass of the fishing gear they just won from this challenge. Wow. Thanks, Shambo. It's been like, what, two minutes? Cheese. Well, we go to episode three where, surprise, surprise, Foa Foa is such a mess, they are eating up all the screen time again. And at the immunity challenge, Russell is leading them and... Galoo wins! Immunity and reward! You have comfort or you have function. Five seconds to decide. Comfort. Galoo, any debate for you about which would have made more sense for the tribe? We've been finding food, we're fine. We need comfort, we wanna lay our heads down. That's it, that's the way to go. And that's why I made the decision, Jeff. I'm a function guy, but they are a comfort group right now, so. But there was that split second, I was like, towels? What the hell do we need towels for? There's no showers out here. I know the guys are gonna be all over me, but at the end of the day, if I make the women happy, we're gonna be happy. And Russell did not take the tarp, and I think that was a bad move. I would have sacrificed everything on that comfort item list for the tarp because maybe it won't rain for 39 days, maybe I'm wrong. But the day it does rain over here, every single one of those comfort luxury <laughs> items are gonna be soaked and all of a sudden not so comfortable. Yeah, this is the first time all season I completely disagree with Russell. I mean, I get it. He cares about the women of the tribe and puts them above the men like a gentleman does. But long term, this can't be good for them that tarp is going to be needed. It's going to rain at some point. Back at camp, we even hear more reactions from the women about how happy they are about this decision. And the men are like, what just happened? We then go to episode four, where finally we get to see more of Galoo. Shambo apparently enjoyed her time a bit too much at Foa Foa. As she says, uh, they're like her family. They're like her real tribe and Galoo is not. But that's neither here nor there as their tribe gets a note that says the leaders need to take two people with them on a mysterious quest. Russell takes Danger Dave and Shambo and when they arrive, so we're just sitting there looking at each other, you know, we're waiting for Jeff because at every challenge so far, Jeff has already been there. So we're like, what do we do? For today's challenge, you'll be left on your own to battle for a war inside this box. Suddenly it was on. The frenzy was on. Shambo's grabbing chicken. Oh, we're jumping into the treasure box. And it's got all these colored balls and it's got some instructions. Bocce like ball. Bocce ball. Bocce ball horseshoes. All right. Wow. Yes. Russell's ball knocks mine closest and I can taste the chicken in my mouth. That's it. Mm. Oh, Shannon Lee. Lord have mercy. Mick had thrown those last two balls so close to the stick. My goal was to like not even get close to them because I didn't want to mess anything up. So I'm going for it. No! Oh. We're panicking all over the place. Shambo was like, no good. Dang. So now it's between Russell from Foa Foa and Dave. Carrying that chicken coop felt great coming home. Every time it scraped against the back of my ankles, I thought, that's okay. We're bringing home the bacon, baby. We're back! Yeah. We won the challenge! Yeah. We're gonna have eggs every morning for the entire Back at camp, Shambo loves the chickens so much that Russell assigns her the job of giving them water. And in response to this, she goes over to the chickens and she clucks at them. Now, this could be a funny one-off thing, but the show doesn't portray it like that. And the next morning, she's doing it again. And even Russell's face says, what the heck is this woman doing right now? But then a few minutes later, Shambo's incompetence lets a chicken loose. Oh my gosh. Everyone chases after it and Eric gets completely clotheslined by the clothesline. The chicken then flies up into a tree and escapes them and Shambo says, wow, 
I didn't know chickens could fly. And Russell's like, dude, seriously, Galu does lose immunity, but considering their current 10 to 6 advantage over Foa Foa, this isn't a big deal. However, Russell doesn't like that Monica held them back during the challenge. Today, we lost our first immunity challenge, and I just got pissed off. There was no reason why we should have lost. We had to lead the whole time. And then I kind of saw one person kind of fall apart. And that was Monica. In terms of the challenge, Monica screwed that up. There's no question in my mind. She was terrible. It's like it's like Club Med or something. As much as I hate to do that. I think, you know, my mindset's pretty much same as yours. Yeah. Fair enough, but I personally would want Shambo out, and apparently the rest of the tribe agrees, as they say it has to be Shambo or Yasmin. But while Shambo is annoying, she does constantly work, they acknowledge, so Yasmin has to go because all she does is sit around all day and do nothing. Now recall that earlier scene where Eric wants to align with Russell? Well, it comes to fruition here as he passes on this information to Russell who says, no way. These two ladies actually help in challenges. Monica, she never helps. She is worthless. Worthless in these challenges. So we go to Tribal Council where Russell votes and... Yasmin, this is the complete wrong vote. You are stronger than any other woman on this tribe. But I have to go with the rest of the tribe. I'm sorry, but I hate making this vote. Know that. Fourth person voted out of Survivor Samoa. Yasmin. Yasmin, chop is spoken. Time for the go. Good for him. There's really no need to fight the majority of his tribe at this stage in the game. Episode 5 sees them competing in the gross food competition, and in an interesting head to head battle, Russell faces off against Russell Hance of the Foa Foa tribe. Our Russell, the good one, easily downs the disgusting food while Hance struggles hard. However, it is not Russell solely who gives them the win, as Galoo does win reward because Ashley of the Foa Foa tribe blows it. And once again, Russell gets picked someone to go over to Foa Foa and not get the reward. And that is. I'm going to send my girl Shambo again. Excuse me? I don't think that's very fair since I've already been. I mean, what do you, what do you want me to do? Can you spread the love for me? Russell has made wow. his decision. I'm so bummed out. I'm pissed. Having Russell say that I had to come over to Foa Foa. He's not coming to Foa Foa. He's missing out on the protein that my body so badly needs right now. I feel like I got hit by a train today. Well, it really sucked that I sent Shambo over to the tribe so she couldn't partake in the feast. Well, it really sucked when she lost our chicken. All right? Yeah, all right. So this should clean her slate, but she, she had to suffer some consequences for losing a soup food source. I don't buy it. I think Shambo is sent because that choice angers fewer people and ruffles fewer feathers, pun intended. But with everything so wet, they're struggling to start a fire. And Dave sits by them all making snarky comments. Russell says, Dave, if you can start the fire, then just do it. And instead, Dave says, oh no, chief, not unless you directly ask me nicely. Like what the heck, Dave, just start the fire for the tribe. Him and Russell kind of have a beef, but after realizing the errors of his ways, Dave does like this half-hearted apology. I'm not sure if I buy it. I'm surprised anyone wants to beef with Russell at all, considering how respected he is and how much he looks out for them at all times. So we go to the immunity challenge where Russell is put into a key role for his tribe's victory. Five is ready. Go. Jason with the first hit for Fall Foa. Rain really coming down now. Jason piling on Russell now. Another one from Eric. That might do it, and it does. Russell's out of the challenge. With the last remaining hope for Foa Foa. Jason connects. Russell now struggling for Galoo. Russell, hang out. Russell, hang out. With out of the challenge, Galoo. Episode 6 starts and you have to be asking yourself, how the heck is this story going to its climax already? What does Russell do wrong to blow his game and get voted off? Well, to begin the episode, we see him fishing in the early morning with this very ominous music and weird sound effects. Something's off here. To be fair, it has now been five days straight of rain. We have seen most of this through Foa Foa's eyes, but finally we're seeing Galoo suffer. And yeah, as you can expect, all the comfort items are wet. Would have been really nice to have tarp to keep everyone dry, but... No, they're suffering. I will give Russell credit though, because he works his tail off to make up for this. Russell's an animal. Russell was out working on the fire while every single one of us was huddled up, trying to stay warm, just trying to keep sane. And he's out there just busting his butt. 
for me to see that, you know, it's awesome to see him push himself, but also like, you know, it's great that you're out there doing it, but at the same time, it was a bit unnecessary and went a little bit too far. I'd rather be in the shelter, but sometimes you have to make some deposits in case you need any withdrawals later on. You know, that chief thing kind of balances to the negative, so just trying to keep the fire burning. This is buying stock low. Hopefully I'll be able to sell high later. Russell's definitely got this like stubborn determination to do everything. But truth is like the elements out here, like it's gonna break you down. He's just pushing himself too hard and it's, it's gonna take its toll, you know? But then as if their prayers have been answered, the rain finally stops and wow, how nice. But in this secret scene, we see Russell is still mentally struggling. And I feel like I'm 80 and we haven't been eating all that well. So yeah, it's been tough sledding out here. I'm like some kind of weird shape this morning. I don't know why. I had a quarter of a slice of papaya all day. Yeah. But I walked four miles, maybe even longer than that, collecting firewood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To start a fire that went out twice. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? It's yeah. just like... You hang in there, you can do it. And honestly, we the whole tribe need you. Yeah, this game Survivor is more like a marathon than a sprint. So I know I got a whole lot of heavy lifting to do. I just, you know, hope at the end of the day my body doesn't fail me. That's a nice sign, isn't it? A real nice sign. I don't think they have a rainbow on the forward side of that. Look, there's a blue sky out there. I think going through a storm like this, I think it definitely brings the tribe together because um, we weathered it all together. Now that we're out, we, we know we got a task at hand and um, we're stronger than ever. I mean, we really are. I'm going to guess that secret scene we saw first was cut since it doesn't add to the story at all, unlike the beautiful rainbow the show does leave in. Both tribes then go to the war challenge where Jeff says, I got some good news and I got some bad news. Good news is that you are all playing for pizza. Bad news is you're both going to tribal no matter what. Fun. Galoo needs to set out four people and considering this is for reward and not immunity, Russell should set out after overworking himself and John and Dave even tell him to, but Russell is too stubborn to not fight. So the challenge starts and Russell is blindfolded pushing the ball with Eric and Laura is inside the ball and he's just struggling, he's like stumbling around until... Left, Russ, left, left, Russ, left, 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 left! Hold on. <sighs> Don't fall. Has no Don't idea fall. where he's at right okay. now. Down. Russell, are you with me? I'm good. He, he was out. He yeah, was definitely out. No, I'm good. Let's go. Let's go. No, I'm cool. Man, it was a little windy from pushing the bar, but I'm good. Russ, are you okay? Russ? Russ? Russ, are you with us? Hold on. Russ? Russell. Russ, talk to me. Russ, talk to me. Russell, Russell, wake up, mate. Wake up. There? Huh? Yeah. Mm hmm. Do you remember what just happened? Huh? His heart rate was 97 when we sat him up, and now it's 68. Okay. And it dropped. It dropped like really that. suddenly. Don't feel comfortable getting him in. Not with his heart doing what it's doing. My family depends on me to be the strong one. Is this how you want this no. to end? No. No. It's frustrating to be pulled out of a game you wanted to be a part of for so long. You were in great shape. You were the leader of a tribe that was dominating. You were no sign that you were going home anytime soon. You pushed and pushed and pushed your body until your body said, enough. There's nothing about that that is a quitter. For Russell to go down the way he did today, it shows you how tough this game is. And a guy like Russell gives you everything he's got and more every single time. And then he comes back and he's a workhorse and his body failed him today. And it's so unfortunate. Being taken out of the game for medical reasons is the worst thing I've ever felt in my life. I played every minute to win this game. And to have my body fail me is utterly demoralizing. But even though it pains me to not be in it, to do it and fail is better than to never try. Wow, Russell Swan has by far the scariest exit and medical evacuation that Survivor has seen since season two when Scoopin burned his skin in the fire. 
Yeah. Galoo will end up collapsing with Russell gone, and it just makes me wonder what would have happened if he stayed and someone else was voted out instead. Russell was very loyal to their group, and he would have done his best to make sure Fofoa didn't stand a chance come the merge. But this is not the end of his tale. Six seasons later, Survivor decides to bring back three players. Three players who were medically evacuated. They will each be split onto three tribes with a cast of all newbies. So the question is, will Russell do better now with some age and wisdom? Well, 39 days, 18 people, one, survive. Season 25 Survivor Philippines sees the return of Jonathan Penner, a fan favorite here on the channel, Michael Scoopin, and of course our man, Russell Swan. Russell says this time he's playing even harder than before. The last time I played Survivor smacked me in the chops, and this time I'm smacking back. And either these people will run with me, or I'm gonna have to run them over. That's it. There are three tribes this season, a first since season eight, and Russell is on the blue Matt Singh tribe. Jeff says, everyone, you have 60 seconds to grab your stuff and get off this boat. And of course, Penner gives Jeff some back talk. So everyone gets what they can and they jump off. And my big question is, what will Russell do differently this time? Has he learned any lessons from before or will this just be Samoa 2.0, but six seasons later? Well, upon arriving at the Matt Singh camp, Russell says, this time I promise not to be the leader. No doubt about the fact that I am just absolutely thrilled to be here again. I feel blessed. So the last time I played this game, I was in this leadership role, but this time the whole leadership ain't gonna happen. All right, guys, so listen. I mean, I tried to do this leadership thing before. Look at that guy. <laughs> so no leaders here. We're all a team. My plan is to deal them out. And if this leadership thing comes up, throw it at the guy who doesn't realize that leadership isn't a good thing. Because there's always some guy who's an idiot. I think I should be the leader. Okay, you're right. You're the man. Oh, thank you, my hero. And just watch him crash and burn, dummy. <laughs> what I want is just well, something just, underneath just a, just a little bit that under. it's gonna sit mm -hmm. on this. And you usually don't wanna try to cut on the knuckle. You don't? No. Oh, okay, so that's gonna yeah, be Yeah, knuckle is the, the hardest part to cut. What's, what's Russell wanna do? It's kind of how today's going. Russell keeps telling us that he's not the leader, but he's the one who's sitting there saying, Okay guys, now go take a five minute break, drink some water. It's like, okay, we have to listen to him. He wants to be the leader so bad and everything has to be the way he wants it done. Well, okay then. I think he may be misreading what went wrong in Samoa. He was a solid leader there, aside from picking pillows over tarp and was generally well respected. His tribe dominated with him in charge. He just needs to not overwork himself. I think that was the biggest point. And of course, get part of the majority alliance. But anyways, Malcolm apparently is an expert fire maker as him and Russell work to get that happening and they succeed and it only takes like half an hour with no flint i'm impressed however in this secret scene we see the rain is already starting it's kind of like on and off again which is better than the five continuous days of rain in samoa but still it's already raining. We do see talks of Russell happening behind his back, namely between Denise and Malcolm, who agree they do not want to live in this dude's shadow all season. Hmm, ominous. Now I know what you're thinking. Does Russell have an unfair advantage being the only returning player on this tribe with a bunch of newbies? The answer is no. The person with the biggest advantage here is Zane, or at least that's what Zane tells us, because he's making an alliance with everyone. Every single person on this tribe he's gonna be aligned with. And then he tells Russell and Malcolm, He's like, hey, I have an alliance with everyone, just to, just to let you know. And they're like, oh, thanks. Thanks for letting us be the last of your alliances. So uh, I guess we'll see how that pans out for Zane. But as Russell goes to reach into their bag of rice, there's a piece of paper in there. I'm like, that's the clue. I'm good. Just happenstance, there's just sheer luck. So I'm swimming and I see Russell, as he's shuffling with the firewood, he's reaching in his pocket. Have you had any chance to look for an oh. item? Dude, I don't even, you don't I don't even, even do that. You know, it's definitely something that helps tremendously. Yeah. But I'm gonna tell you right now, I see somebody looking for the idol and I catch them, target. You get it, you going next. <laughs> Best believe that. So is it a tree, is it under a bush in their shelter? I guess crazier things have happened, but apparently it's somewhere close if it's right under his nose. And I gotta say, on a tribe this small, an idol holds even more power, relatively speaking. It is now time for immunity, and uh, Russell, he continues to lead. 
even though he said he's not going to do that and he's still doing it he gives everyone their assignments on what to do in the challenge and it's as if he told himself so many times not to be the leader that his brain's like yeah okay buddy uh, i got the message but i'm ignoring it russell's leaving himself on red anyways matt single loses immunity and malcolm says russell being the leader and not letting everyone pick what they're best at in this challenge is the cause of this loss back at camp angie says if russell really didn't want to be the leader then why did he go around telling us what to do and then russell says yeah i realize i overstepped my boundary I need to step back for real this time. But then in a twist of fate, Zane says, hey guys, I know it's been three days and I'm the best player here, but my body can't hold up, especially since I'm a heavy smoker and I didn't quit until they dropped me on this beach. Wow. Zane then tells everyone that Russell has an idol. What? Why? Doesn't he want to go? I mean, I guess if he's trying to put the target on Russell, cool, but why do that? I'm so confused. So they all go to tribal council to vote and... Zane, I'm not ready to go home yet. I wish you lots of luck, man. First person voted out of Survivor Philippines. Zane. Zane, chop spoken. We went to trial tonight. I knew my head was potentially on the chopping block. I got into this kind of tribal chief thing where it was my way or the highway. And it almost got me voted out. So my strategy going forward is to step back and let them rise and fall on the decisions that they make. That way, if we crash and burn, then they can be on the chopping block as opposed to me. He keeps saying it, but will he actually do it? I mean, if he goes full chief like he did in Samoa and they win like Galu did, who's really going to complain? Winning makes up for any flaws a team has. That night, everyone sees Malcolm and Angie cuddling and are like, mm-hmm. Angie's got two big reasons for why Malcolm wants to do this. The next day in a secret scene, we see Roxy's completely obsessed with washing everyone's clothes. She's like, at home, I do it all the time. And here, I have to do it. It's just like, it's like an OCD thing. And people are like, no, Roxy, please don't wash my clothes it's okay if they're dirty we're on survivor but then that night malcolm and angie are cuddling again and again people are like yeah they're not just cuddling for warmth you can tell they got the hots for each other russell even says who you cuddle with is who you're aligned with the next day the sun finally comes out and it's time for the immunity challenge where yep. you guys got this There's only five people left matt Singh does not want to go to tribal council again yes. russell and angie they're hung up in the frame now the pieces are starting to fall off. Matt seeing way behind early in this challenge. Malcolm and Russell with a lot of time to make up. They lost the first challenge. Do not want to lose again. Time. Yeah. All right, go to second. Good job, you guys. Russell and Malcolm solved their first puzzle. Go, put it in. Let's go. <laughs> Matt Singh was out of this challenge, and they are now back in it. Right there. Right there. Get it. How do they do it? Calabal wins. Immunity and charm. Matt Singh goes to tribal council for the second straight time. What is the frustration? I'm pissed off. Forget these other stupid talking tribes. They can't beat us. They shouldn't be able to beat us. And yet they have twice. Well, that's because these folks haven't decided that they are unbeatable and they can do this. Jeez, I mean, Matt Singh's already lost more than Glue ever did under Russell. Back at camp, Russell says Angie and Roxy have a losing attitude and are not at all helping them in challenges. However, that doesn't mean he should have exploded with all that emotion either. He then pitches to Denise that they vote off Angie since Roxy actually helps him by feeding him information that she finds out. And we then go to tribal council where Jeff says, Angie, Please tell me what you think this tribe needs to turn things around. That we could have cookies. Russell, is this what you're talking about? You guys have lost two challenges in a row. One of your tribe mates says, well, if I could change anything, cookies. Yeah, I mean, Jeff, she's a wonderful young lady and I give her mad props, but this is just new to her. And so the thing is, you gotta leave everything out there every challenge and you have to be completely about action. I know it's supposed to be played like a big joke and that she's dumb, but if production were to give Matt Singh a plate full of cookies right now, I bet you they would love it and they wouldn't think Angie's so dumb after all. But then the topic of Malcolm and Angie having the hots for each other comes up and Malcolm's like, no, no, she's like a little sister to me. And Roxy's like, well, then that's creepy. That's really creepy. And then she calls Angie a booby trap. Oh, well, you know, it's time to vote then, and... Second person voted out of Survivor Philippines. Roxy. Roxy, the tribe is spoken. 
Episode three is Angie saying, no, no, Malcolm's like a big brother to me. And like, maybe if there's more than a four year gap between these two, I might believe it, but I don't. And I think I agree with Roxy here. If that's the case, if they really think they're brother and sister, it's a little creepy. Russell then says, no way. These two clearly like each other. And in a group of four, a couple is extremely dangerous. We then see a secret scene that gives us some camp life and a moment to relax before the chaos ensues. We found snails to eat and we're gonna cook them up with some rice. It's gonna be really good. You guys hear that? Mm -hmm. is, is it just me? Like, like there's sand in there or mm -hmm. something. Yeah. I think I Don't chew so food. hard. Just do like a channel. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, it feels like my teeth are breaking. You gotta be down with it. I'm so sorry, but I don't know about this. <laughs> it was disgusting eating snails. We forgot to take off the shells, and so when we were eating them, like the shells would be like so hard, it almost felt like you were chewing on like your own teeth. I don't think we need to repeat it. I'm gonna look for our first time. Yep. But I don't, I don't think we need to repeat this. Okay. How nice. Anyways, Matt sings Raph floats away and they don't know where it is. Russell still hasn't found the idol with the clue he has, and the million bucks they're trying to win is only 600 grand by the time Obama takes it. Oh, sorry for that rant. They then go to the immunity challenge, where... Russell now in the water for Matt Singh. Russell trying to get up, losing some time. Russell comes back empty handed for Matt Singh and that is going to cost them a lot of time. Everybody working on their puzzle. You need to pick it up, Matt Singh. Tandey thinks they have it. And they do, treasure is the word. Calabal, Tandang with immunity. Matt Singh, winless, heading to Tribal Council for the third straight time. I just want to scream. It's just tragic that I'm stuck out here with just the goon squad of tribes. We have a girl who couldn't get a float out from two feet under the water. Russell, built like an ox, can't climb a three foot ladder out of the ocean. Back at camp, we quickly realize that who goes home tonight is up to Denise and Malcolm. They hold all the cards. Angie's voting Russell, Russell's voting Angie. At Tribal Council, Malcolm says, no more being nice and caring about each other's feelings. We just have to be brutally honest with each other from now on. I mean, if we want to have any improvements in this tribe, we got to do that. So Russell then argues that he's infinitely more valuable than Angie. He says he struggled in one challenge, but she struggles in all of them. This causes Angie to cry, and it's kind of a bad look on Russell, but hey, this is what Malcolm said he wanted. So everyone goes to vote and sorry I made you cry that's the way this game seems to be playing and I have to play hard or go home third person voted out of Survivor Philippines Angie Angie the tribe has spoken good luck guys episode four begins and it is dead silent at the camp while it rains I guess at this point, what is there to talk about? There's nothing gameplay wise, which is why Russell and Malcolm basically try to entertain each other with jokes. And it's nice to see some laughter in the midst of suffering, which causes Russell to have a renewed focus and desire to turn this thing around for the Matt Singh tribe. My plan is with Denise and Malcolm to mount the greatest comeback that's ever been seen. There is no quit in either one of them. There damn sure isn't any quit for me because I know I was willing to die for this damn game the last time I played it. So line it up, let's go, and we'll let the chips fall where they may. Truly inspiring, and I would almost believe that might happen if it wasn't for the very next thing we see being Malcolm saying Russell lacks awareness. Thanks. And then after that, we see Russell saying, if they lose, no one has promised to keep him over the other person. Hmm, so he decides it's high time to look for the idol once again, and... Until my torch is snuffed, I will be trying to find that idol because there's no question about it, I'm probably gonna need it. The clue reads something like, and I love this word, somewhere near your beach. It's right beneath your nose. The real frustrating part is I have a feeling that I've been like past this thing like a hundred million times. It's like right there. And then everybody's gonna see, there's gonna be like this flash on the screen 
and they're gonna be like, this dummy, he's walking past it, and it's just, it just sucks. If only Russell Swan could channel Russell Hance of Samoa, then he would have gotten this idol a long time ago. But Denise does catch him looking for it, which causes doubt in her and Malcolm's mind. So they look through his stuff and nothing, of course, because he doesn't have it, but they're like, uh, well, if he found something, it still could be on his person, doesn't necessarily have to be in his bag. We then see in the secret scene, the Matt Singh tribe getting tree mail and we're down to three and it sucks, but we're down to the essential three. The people who know that it's gut check time. You've got to be firing on however many cylinders you have, four, six, eight, 12, all of them better be firing today. I mean, everybody knows you got to win today. I mean, there is no real plan B. Our loss is fatal. Matt Singh ceases to exist. Survivors ready. Yo, this is a challenge that may go quickly. So falling behind could get you in trouble. Russell heading back for Matt Singh. Matt Singh still in the lead. Matt Singh is now back. They're heading out for the final stage of this challenge. I just can't take this. You've been going on breaking pots, talking to I don't know who, if you're talking to God. I'm talking to God, Lord. I mean, Jeff. You're just a guy. I'm a guy who was formed by God's hands, a perfect creature. And as far as I'm concerned, that's the way I'm supposed to live my life, in excellence. And that means and, never failing. And yeah, right. Not everyone can succeed at everything. It pisses me off, but at the same time, logically, I understand. Uh, yeah, I gotta say, there's a lot of arrogance coming out of Russell, but in four episodes, we've gotten a much clearer picture of the guy we saw in Samoa. He feels flushed out here as a character and as a human. He feels relatable. In Samoa, we got brief glimpses of him, but now it's the good, the bad, and the ugly. Back at camp, he talks to Denise, and she kind of goes full therapist on him. I don't go into anything expecting less than the best. And when I lose, I'm pissed. Is that Life. how you've always, I mean, is that how you've always kind of handled it? I got jumped by two kids. I was probably about eight. I was walking home from school. So, long story short, I catch one of them. Without even thinking, I just punched him right in his face. And he started crying. And it was something about that. Like, not the, because I don't condone violence, but it was something about just not being in fear. I think just from that day, it was just like, I'm not gonna cower in the face of anything. I see the fire, I see you trying to figure out why we're in this. Right. But you know, and I don't know. You know and the first thing I'm trying to figure out is if I'm going home tonight. See what I mean? It's really the good and the bad. I love how well we are getting to know him this time, and it's why I love this show so much when it takes the time to do this. We then see Denise telling Russell to vote for Malcolm, and Malcolm tells him, hey, vote Denise. We then go to Tribal Council where Russell jokes that when he grows up, he wants to be just like Malcolm. Look how awesome Malcolm is. Oh, brother. So finally, everyone votes, and I'm only making this vote because you're just going to be too big a threat going forward, but you are a great kid. First vote, Russ, Malcolm. One vote Malcolm, one vote Russ. Fourth person voted on Survivor Philippines. Oh. Russ, chop spoken. I know the season makes Russell Swan look worse than he did in Samoa, but I think this edit was a lot more real and not scared to show his bad side since he wouldn't be medically evacuated in a scary circumstance. So the editors knew, hey, we can just show everything. I'm personally a big fan. If you get the chance, check out his YouTube channel. I'll put a link in the description. So what do you think about Russell Swan? What could have done to make his second chance even better? Let me know down in the comments below. Thanks for watching and doubly thanks for liking and subscribing. See you all next time.